That's how I look at it. Yes, right. ma'am, you're right. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, Bosdin, sir, I, I, I believe like this is the first time I'm seeing you. Me? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> nice meeting you, as well. Yeah. You, I heard of you in several seminars, but this is the first time I'm interacting with you as well. I, I, I am from West Bengal. Good evening, good evening, uh, one and all. I am from West Bengal. <laughs> the, the, the worst is great. So, <laughs> I mean, how did you come like a god? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. ma'am. Yeah, you are having discussion. Hello. <laughs> sorry for sorry for being like you know it is always you know this technical yeah. issues. And, okay. uh, and let me let me let me say one thing. Basudev Paul is uh, spooning you. Don't just carry it away. You know him through and through. No. Basudev Paul. Yes. Sir. No class. Very very well. You get me. You get me in guest every time. Regular guest, look at that, villa. Whenever I open up WhatsApp, I get the link of person. <laughs> Today we are late. I think it's a bit late. Person is untiring. Hats off, really. I can't help. You are untiring. Yeah, really. You also. <laughs> Well, anyway, we, we, we have a special guest today, you know, uh, in the form of, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, book presentation. We have this uh, Professor Tangirala Srilatam ma'am here with us. So today the show would be different. And I mean, like, uh, unlike a regular uh, poet recital, we have much big presentation and then we would uh, do poetry recital. So anyway, uh, let's begin the show. I welcome you all. I it's being streamed now. I see Gagash, Nadisha, ma'am, intently watching us and listening us. <laughs> she joined our team. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Ji ji. Abhi abhi bolne ka samay nahi hai abhi. Abhi sunne ka samay hai aapka. Okay okay. Let, let me say. Let me say. Listen to me. Uh, somebody uh, from I got a poem in your group, Silence. And in reply to it, I instantly comp composed the poem on silence only. And uh, I am planning to read it out today. Yeah, sure, sure. sure, sure. If you don't like, listen to it. Yes, sir. But before that, let us begin the show with. Uh, okay, begin, begin. Uh, okay, okay. Let me welcome you all, honorable poets, eminent poets all across the world. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good, uh, uh, good morning. Uh, this is Prasanna Kumar from Fertile Bands. I welcome you all on behalf of the entire group of uh, entire team of uh, Fertile Bands once again with the poetic evening with Fertile Bands. Today we'll be having a book presentation by. Uh, Dr. Tangirala Sri Lata ma'am and then we have a uh, poetic recital. Let me bef before that, uh, she has released this uh, new book which is called Diamond India Unheard uh, Songs of Obscure in uh, Heroes. So I said that um, uh, 15,000 stuff. I request you all to kindly mute your mics so that there would not be any echo or any disturbance. Otherwise, uh, uh, that is it. Okay. Uh, so uh, I was saying this is uh, Diamond uh, Diamond Indian Unheard Songs of Obscure Heroes. This is a first edition by Tangela Srilata Ma'am and it is submitted by Sujata Santalia Agarwal. It is a compilation of you know unsung heroes of and uh, freedom fighters which are given by you know uh, poets have contributed. It came out very well and it released on 14th of uh, this month. And this is such a uh, coincidence. And let me read out uh, uh, bio in brief. Uh, maybe she's a long bio, has a long bio. I think uh, she's 
Uh, Tangirala Srilata ma'am is a bilingual poet, short story writer, reviewer, and translator who writes in Telugu and English. And uh, she hails from Andhra Pradesh, uh, and uh, uh, particularly in, from the town Vizewada. And uh, she completed her uh, master's in English uh, from Loyola College. And uh, she received her Humphil degree from Madurai Kamaraj University. And uh, she was uh, awarded a doctorate from uh, Karpagam Academy of Higher Education, Coimbatore. So her interest in female studies and her love to work on Indian others made her pursue her rich uh, research in the works of Kamala Das and Aunt Anita Rao. Anita Rao. She has always been among the top five of her class uh, from her childhood. She's a very good at sports and games and won many prizes since her uh, uh, school days. Even today, she is always uh, a winner in certain games like carom some. Uh, throw ball, shuttle, and whatnot. She is also a Hindi pundit who completed her Praveen in the from Dakshina Bharata Hindi Prachar Sabha Tamil Nadu. And uh, she is a regular participant uh, and presenter of poems and uh, national and international poetry festivals conducted by, and uh, some are conducted and uh, by. Guntur International Poetry Fest and the International Multilingual Poet Meet Amravati Poetic Prison, Vijayawada, Amravati, and so on. And she attended international conferences, seminars conducted by esteemed organization in English language and literature. She represented Telugu language Andhra Pradesh in National Multi Women Writers Meet in one day webinar conducted by University of Mumbai Department of Gujarat. She also writes to Muse India, Little Roma, and other regions. And uh, she also writes regions and uh, her poem, My Mom's Sari, and the short story for a better uh, tomorrow have been awarded best poem and best uh, short story within the apple, much of applause and applause. Uh, the translation of my my mom sari in telugu Amachira is well appreciated in multilingual poetry platforms her poems are in anthologized and well received in various national and internationally reputed collection webinars and other forum and her Amphil dissertation and PhD thesis are completely based on women's studies, as I said earlier. The works of Indian women writers like Kamala Das and uh, she sincerely believes that her contribution in the genre of poetry and research that was published in women related topics gives an extra mile to her. And the awards she uh, received and membership she has included are research. And uh, Recess Excellence Award by Institute of Scholars, received Best Poem Award, Best Story Award from Cape Cameron Trust, Golden Star Award, Nari Samman Award, and many more. She presented research papers on various topics like uh, marginal, uh, marginalization of gender discrimination and effective teachings of language for engineering students, and her paper titled Voice, of, Voice Unheard. A perspective from Gurum Joshua's Gabilam and other works received special appreciation and applause from um, session chair as well as audience. A few papers presented and published uh, were also totally based on women, girl education, girl education, women empowerment, and sensitization. A paper sensitization of, of sensitive minds was well discussed, appreciated, applauded, and presented in Geetam University. So that's it. Uh, that's about uh, Tangirala uh, uh, Srilata ma'am. And she, you know, uh, she also has, you know, uh, trains, uh, you know, engineering graduates, engineering students, and she, you know, managed to place the 4,000 4, students, uh, you know, that's a, that's a really a lot, a lot of good, and I would say. And so that's, uh, that's it about. Uh, 
सी लेता हूँ मैम एंड शी पब्लिश इन एंड टू बिफोर वॉइस टॉल्स डायमंड इंडिया ऑन हेयर सॉन्ग्स एंड दैट इज व्हाट आई वी आर वी आर एबल टू डिस्कस एंड नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम श्री लता मैम टू द पोडियम एंड टू से समथिंग अबाउट हाउ यू कम अबाउट दिस ऑन हेयर सॉन्ग्स ऑफ ऑब्स्क्योर हीरोज एंड हाउ इट ट्रांसलेटेड इनटू योर बुक एंड ओवर टू यू मैम थैंक वेलकम यू थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच प्रसन्न ब्रदर फॉर दिस इंट्रोडक्शन एंड i uh, from this platform i thank all the poets who have complete uh, contributed to this book and made my dream come true a few of them are here brother prasanna ivan madam molly joseph is one and uh, asim kumar paul sir he also contributed so my sincere thanks to all of you and now uh, before i proceed uh, i will show you the book uh, diamond india and heard songs of obscure heroes yes thank you very much for having it yes ma'am thank you asim kumar ji thank you molly ji thank you very much and uh, actually this happened in the month of february i was thinking about uh, compiling a very good book and uh, that should be a one uh, which is not un- which is untrodden so that should not be a regular book like any other book text like adding to the content this should be something new like excavating some exploring something new which is not touched or certain things to bring to light and make uh, all the sacrifices and the hardships faced by our freedom fighters no the readers so with this uh, thought i started thinking about the title and this is how it has come diamond india because we completed 75 years of independence and this is the 76 independence so i thought it should be diamond india and along with that i wanted to highlight the unheard songs of many many obscure heroes who were left in darkness for various reasons so this thought gave me good confidence and when i uh, then requested a contribution from poet friends in various groups there is excellent excellent response and much applause for the title first of all and hence with that very good uh, encouragement i started the work and it went on very well at one point of time uh, the number was more than what i expected uh, but finally for some reason some people dropped in the middle and uh, there are good number of poems and even 76 my dream was 75 but uh, 76th poem that is really uh, uh, a very big achievement for me and then uh, i will just go through the book then i talk about the poems who uh, really give us which are really so informative so i would like to talk about those poems and uh, one among such poems is about um, one minute yes before i start i would like to say from the bottom of my heart i appreciate all the contributing poets from across the nation for their incredible support enthusiasm and patriotism which they showered on many unheard freedom fighters who showed the right direction and laid a righteous path for the future struggle amazingly the book also houses six child prodigies who contributed to this anthology setting new boundaries for it to scale besides many patriotic poets from across the nation there are two poets wonderfully one from uganda and the other from nepal who enriched this anthology with their unbelievable collaboration and a touching contribution The book proudly presents all these brilliant diamonds as a cherishing treasure to the future generations who enjoy the gains of the inconceivable inconceivable pains of many a selfless fighter. Now, to feel the real emotion of the gallant heroes, let me walk you through a few poems in brief. I am just I am not reading the poems as well. Uh, I will just give you the uh, gist of it. 
because reading my poem uh, is not so important now acknowledging the greatness of various poets and the greatness of various freedom fighters i believe is a need of the hour the first one which i want to mention is the poem no shirt no shirt varadachari nsv this poem uh, is contributed by the poet sri s sundar rajan who got inspired uh, sorry varadachari garu got inspired by the clarion call of the mahatma to boycott anything foreign actually by that time he was uh, one of the leading lawyers practicing as a successful lawyer uh, who had many degrees to his credit but uh, responding to the mahatma's call he abandoned all his degrees his legal profession and everything that was luxury he plunged into the non violent struggle took to khadi and even he completely transformed his attire also exactly like the mahatma and uh, that's really the biggest contribution he could do to the national freedom fight at that time then uh, i would like to show you the picture of paradachari garu who is exactly like mahatma gandhi uh, this is the one no shirt varadachari he left his attire also he changed his attire he took to khadi and this is mahatma gandhi exactly like mahatma gandhi he too was wearing only khadi a dhoti and uh, thus he participated in the freedom struggle that's the biggest uh, contribution he could do and the greatest inspiration to many others even today then a highly informative poem a 160 year old amazing truth this is by dr n ashruddin from tamil nadu uh, in this poem he gives us a lot of information on an incident which uh, may become the first revolt of indian freedom struggle uh, very soon it elucidates the heartbreaking and stunning saga of 160 human skeletons that were found in a well at anjala punjab many teams of geneticists the department of center of cellular and molecular biology dna fingerprinting etc they have worked on this and revealed the buried truth that there were they were the martyrs of the ganga plains fears as tigers those people attacked and killed many brutal british officers and hence as a revenge those people were also killed and thrown into a well and that was covered with a lid and it was so pathetic that for so many years they were lying like that and the well was abandoned but after some research it's really an audacious uh, audacious stab to bury the painful reality in the well but after lot of research and re researching almost because it was misled that they were the people of uh, jallian wala bag tragedy so all those people uh, were buried in the well people thought like that but after all this uh, research done by these departments it was known that those people were sent to that particular regiment and they were fighting the british at that time so history might be rewritten after this revelation and this incident might become the first uh, revolution against the british so this poem gives us this kind of information and the other poem about the emotional abuse experienced by sri pingali venkaya when he was asked to salute the british flag he felt insulted and the uh, torture that he has undergone uh, gave us the beautiful design beautifully designed tricolored flag our bharat ka national flag today so even that poem is there which is giving lot of information about sri pingali venkaya garu and uh, it also pays tribute to that great personality and there is another poem titled the village that stood tall actually this is about the united work the unity of the villagers who though they, they didn't meet gandhi ji at that time actually gandhi ji has been moving 
across the nation to various places but he didn't happen to visit this particular village but still they took inspiration by the or oh, very call of mahatma gandhi the swaraj call and they were uh, united as spiders to tie down a lion 32 intrepid heroes who valiantly encountered the british were imprisoned and the whole village was emptied so 32 young people from the village they were very very gallant very valorous and they uh, fought against the rules of the british they didn't bend down their heads for that reason they were all imprisoned and the village was emptied all the people were sent away from the village and these people were imprisoned and the authorities of the jail persuaded them to participate in the second world war at that time and also for that the jail authorities they offered them some perks for which all these people they collectively denied without getting into the trap of the false promises of the british officers they even went to the extent of changing the minds of a few other prisoners actually by the time a few prisoners indian prisoners who were there in the jail they accepted to the perks and other temptations that were offered by the british officers and they were ready to participate in the second world war but these people these 32 great uh, warriors from this village they slowly uh, influenced the minds of other prisoners who consented previously not to participate and hence the remaining prisoners also refused to participate and finally the officers were left with a uh, dropped job when they tried to convince and influence the women of the village because the officers thought they could go and influence the uh, women the mothers of these youngsters but still these women also they were very very brave and courageous who said for their bitter point disappointment of the uh, jail officers they were the real lionesses who did not yield to them and one mother among them one of them even denied to acknowledge that chamaru parida one of the youngsters among the 32 chamaru parida is a young man his mother uh, she was asked whether that boy was her son or not then she denied saying no he is not my son he is the son of the village so he is everybody's son we are all his her his mothers so that way she also didn't cooperate or didn't yield to the british officers and again the police had to leave the place with a long face with a long face so the villagers thus with a strong mind uh, proved that they cannot uh, yield to the greatest authority they starved all day because police people were not allowing them to work anything they starved all day they have undergone all these uh, suffering but during nights they worked and they try to get something for their livelihood so this is another story which is very touching and moving then uh, the kutu contributions from uh, uganda and nepal they too were about the greatest uh, sacrifices and the freedom fighters of our nation and uh, these two poets they have shown their respect to our indian freedom struggle particularly the non violent freedom struggle that is why our indian freedom struggle is not called a fight or a war it's only a struggle we showed our uh, uh, non while uh, our uh, di- disobedience in a non violent manner and uh, with your permission i will root, read two short poems presented by uh, a poetess from tamil nadu padmini janardhan these poems the two poems really Uh, give us the real happenings one among them is little drops of water little deeds of valor for those who have this book in your hands it's on page 61 please go through that the freedom struggle was on the vigor the spirit of a free india filled the air deliberate careful quiet work was theirs printing press bursting with pamphlets and flyers to support an inspirational event abruptly 
the police pounced to seize and stop it but not before she valiantly escaped with a bunch of prints to deliver as planned the republic of india was soon formed few years later freedom fighters were honored a grateful nation announced a pension scheme their names from prison records were ascertained but the gallant women who escaped who made the day's event successful as planned was not in the records little stories of the valorous unseen robust action with committed conviction a generation of stalwarts majestic fill the vast foundation of our republic and in this poem actually this poem is in a uh, third person narration where the she referred to in the poem is the aunt of the poet padmini janardhan so this is uh, a real happening and we have a, a living a proof for it who gave that particular account of uh, the incident which her aunt encountered and on page 62 another short poem by the same poet this is also so revealing bapu ji is here for four days calling for some strong volunteers on a first come first in basis luck favored me and i was in so if you observe the poem is in first person narration so we'll see who this i in the poem was move the table from there to here ordered the coordinator to do the task creditably dragged the heavy table singly drr drr the noise it disturbed whatever was being discussed come here young man bapuji called i went in and stood as before god young man if you can't lift don't drag i repeat if you can't lift don't drag a firm voice with a benign smile a life lesson taught in great style whenever life turns too heavy these words resonate to guide me so here the i the me in the poem is the poet's father so this is the great lineage the poet belongs to her father her aunt or directly into the freedom struggle and these are the two uh, episodes which she narrated and uh, i truly respect and salute the family for it along with uh, the family of uh, the previously uh, discussed poem no shut varadachari actually i received appreciation from that family as well the poet sundar rajan who has contributed that poem he informed that family because poet sundar rajan has uh, taken this particular uh, article uh, this interest from an article published in one of the newspapers by the grandson of noshat varda charigar so with great respect sundar rajan garu he informed that family about the anthology being worked on the unheard songs of obscure heroes and once the anthology is uh, unveiled it is launched i have sent two copies to the family as well and i received very good applause and appreciation for the work done by all the poets it's not my credit or it's not my greatness of course the idea is mine but the research that went on into the book for contributing to this book is really laudable and they appreciated all the poets for that and from this platform i would like to inform all the poet friends the great poet friends uh, for their valuable contribution and uh, also i respect their works now there are uh, many many other poems i will just read the names of the uh, people on whom this research was done 
one is raituranga the breath of soil in andhra pradesh who worked for the farmers and then komaram bhim netaji subhash chandra bose garimella satyanarayana chandrashekar azad and then there was a beautiful poem a really touching poem on jallian wala bag genocide uh, talisetti venkata chalapati he is from sri kalahasti andhra pradesh and then a poem on swami vivekananda alur sitarama raju andhra kesari tanguturi prakasam pantulu marshi arbindo and then khudiram bos warrior elvin and uh, baji raut uyalawada narasimha reddy chatin das tirpur kumaran and uh, another poem by the young trio binoy basu badal gupta and dinesh gupta these three youngsters they have laid down their life for the nation along with bhagat singh mangal pande so these are a few uh, freedom fighters on whose biographies there were poems in this book and along with all the with these poet uh, with these uh, freedom fighters we have great women freedom fighters like anibesant tara rani srivastava freda bedi basanti devi kuili dr mutulakshmi reddy rani of jhansi queen bhima bai neli sen gupta duvuri subamma from uh, rajmandri in andhra pradesh the queen of avad begum hazrat mahal this poem was contributed by our poet friend and our dearest brother mr prasanna then velu nachiya queen of gallantry sangam lakshmi bai durgavati devi rani kiran devi sucheta kruplani sarojini naidu rani chennamma matangini and many many others so uh, in order to make these uh, poets and their works and also the freedom fighters well known to all the people i also did a lot of work i pulled all the biographies i collected the pictures and i shared it with my publisher requesting them to have those photographs of all these people in the book so in the first few pages you can see the greatest people who fought for the nation their pictures in the first pages there are uh, even figure fighters and at the end we have men so uh, with due respect to the dc particularly my brother is uh, now i can do this and i will then uh, audience's response also on this and for the benefit of all the audience very soon i will check with uh, our admin the present now i'm going to link another link so that if anybody is interested to have these books and go to the works i sincerely welcome thanks for your patience thank you ma'am thank you at the outset i think i my my reaction would be that you know this could be and this could be well taken taken as a thesis for the research you know this way every way everything is we have been this is you know you know thanks a lot Uh, such a rich, you know, everything went into you know such a hard work went into you know it has you know shed a, you know, given a, a light of you know um, so I think I, I must appreciate and I must commend the work that went into I mean that's uh, if I'm presenting a, such a beautiful uh, book for us you know at the time of you know seventy five years of independence now I would uh, uh, like to ask. Uh, It is the first time, as I think. Sri Nava Sambandi. I think uh, I will come back to you. But yes. uh, before that, I would like to call uh, uh, Molly Joseph, ma'am, to say a few words and recite her poem. Molly Joseph, ma'am. Doctor Molly Joseph from is a senior professor, and she is an active member of our group. So, Molly Joseph, ma'am. Thank you, President Ji, for the invite. I hope I am audible enough. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. 
I have great, great admiration for Srilatha ma'am for the painstaking effort she's taken. No, it's not a joke to combine and compile a kind of anthology consolidating such a serious theme of life experiences or the sketching, mapping out the life trajectories of those unsung, unheard heroes, you know, and you are imprinting it for the future, for the people to know what a great thing, ma'am, you have done. And the effort that has gone into it, I have no words to salute you. And when I got the copy of the book, I was just going through it with admiration and uh, so much of knowledge about the so-called freedom, you know, which we sometimes take it for granted. We got freedom, yes. Some people fought for it that way. And the new generation, especially for them, what does it mean? You know, India became free, so we do celebrate. It's a kind of taken for grantedness behind everything. A day of celebration, whatever. But how intensely it had gone so deep into our winning our freedom. This is a real eye-opener, man. And uh, I would say, especially these days with regard to the contemporary times, when we simply overlook the importance of true freedom and the hard-earned freedom that is it. The, the hard-earned freedom that we gained, we overlook. And in petty squabbles, how we are, especially we sensitive souls, are heartbroken about the divisive tendencies at work. The unity, the much hoped for unity, where are they? Sometimes it goes into tatters despite all the efforts made to put us together as a one, one India, the single India, with so much heterogeneity, respecting everyone, every cult, accommodating everything. See these stalwarts were not divided by their own, what you call, small walls. No, they fought for the larger India, from all nooks and corners of India. When you read Kantapura, that novel, that novel that we have to teach, I think Sredama might be familiar with it. Where in a village, how women folk, the ordinary women folk, ran in and then sought refuge and they prayed and prayed because they were chased like anything by the soldiers. Real Milkraj and has done it so well, no? The thing is, the intense suffering at what you call races and in front of you. So much as suffering, sacrifice, suffrage. So, these are all the things I feel, uh, Sridhar Ma'am, your whole lifetime you can be proud of. Because you can say, I have nobly lived my life. Because you brought such a beautiful treasure for posterity. Not for the present generation, but for the coming generation. Yes. And... Um, uh, I and one more she is coming up with, you know, second edition, second edition too. And this is the first, first edition, but then second edition is also is there. Wonderful. So wait for it. <laughs> we have another edition too. <laughs> Looking forward to it. More strength to your team in this great, great humanitarian grounds. And uh, um, it was uh, Sri Lada Mama always, I was busy, thick with, uh, you know, my daughter's uh, second delivery and all, and there was a granny in there so much. But still, the mom would ping me and tell me in Hyderabad, ma'am, you should contribute, contribute. So what I felt was like, I know there are any number of great and some heroes concerning freedom. But what suddenly struck my mind was the kind, little unremembered of the kindness of a very ordinary man that happened in Kerala. He was just an auto man. He was called an Aushad. No? Something that happened, I mean, just one year back. And the great sacrifice that very ordinary auto rickshaw man made. I wrote it there in the spur of the moment. Here is that poem I am going to read out for you. Just like words are saying, 
these little unremembered acts that mean so much. Now, Shad, the unsung hero, based on a real incident in Calicut, Kerala. Let me sing of the very ordinary who illumine our lives through actions rare of sacrifice, self-effacing, socked in humanism divine. Or oh, Naushad, the Ottoman of Calicut, stopping for tea at the vendors. What made you jump into that manhole? To save the lives of strangers, two otherwise two unknown migrant workers. You plunge it down to bring them up, saving their lives, but losing yours. Leaving at stake your family, losing your life for people you never knew, except as fellow human beings in jeopardy. Your humane thought guided you, Naushad. We cringe with shame. We, the paltry ones, on wars to dominate, grabbing others, warring mindsets with greed. How rightfully you stand in the pantheon of heroes who made Mother India free, free in the true sense from the walls of division, fighting for man the essential, his survival, the very ordinary who pass unnoticed. Now, Shad, long live your tribe, making the world divine, ushering in love, care, and peace. Thank you, dears. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, presenting your beautiful words and presenting your response to the, you know, Sri Lata ma'am's presentation and everything. And that was really. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for your participation. And also, I take your words seriously. And it will work for the stage. Disturbing, ma'am. Again, again, I will better you have torture you. You have to submit uh, you. your contribution. The will be published. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Srila Tamam and Molly, ma'am. Le let's uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your very beautiful book. Now that now we have concluded our first session, that now we could uh, go to your poetry reading session. And we'll, before coming back to the comments, we'll, I'll, I would like to ca call upon as the hero of the open mics, Mish, and he's my inspiration, I, I would say, Anmesh, Unmesh, Mohitkar, my brother. Hello, hello Prasanna. Uh, namaskar, Moli, ma'am. Uh, yeah. That was a great uh, book, uh, Sri Lata, ma'am. Thanks for that. It's wonderful to be here and wonderful to hear all the tales of the great freedom fighters, all the best for your book and uh, such a wonderful group Prasanna. I'm so inspired today and always thanks for your great words. Uh, just wanted to highlight one thing. Uh, if I, if you don't know, I've got to open my every Saturday 9 p.m. India time. So please do join. Yeah. And uh, thank you. So today I'm going to read a poem about uh, our freedom and independence. I always felt that uh, our country is a great country and we are forgetting our legacy. So here we go. Every step was a struggle. They subjugated, conquered, vanquished us. There was no light even at the end of the tunnel. Still we fought back. The tool was non-violence. The cost was blood. Our dream. Our freedom, only dream our freedom fighters had is to make our country free and to make it dazzling like a star again. You and me are just not people. We are a thought. My legacy is bigger and brighter than the false makeup on the faces of movie superstars. 
we are the heroes who invented zero it is the beginning and the end shampoo the world uses today daily is nothing but shampoo ajanta yellora and taj mahal are the symbols of our forefathers creativity and ingenuity neither greed nor fear can stop us to make it dazzling like a star again knowledge is the power that runs the world our ancient universities the biggest in the world showed the world the path of peace and prosperity my tooth is still leaking just imagine we practiced even dentistry with bows and drills in 7000 bc surprise surprise 600 bc and sushruta was an expert plastic surgeon my face speaks too much i think i need one too it's a promise we make to ourselves to make it dazzling like a star again the ancient world was in awe of indian culture and technology we never conquered countries we conquered hearts and the doctrine was peace and non violence let's be brave and learn to conquer the hearts with love again to make it dazzling like a star again remember one thing this is the truth like shining sun and flying time nations fall when people are divided like a garden of flowers with different colors let our hearts be filled with compassion understanding and love and the minds be brave alert and decisive let's dash the limits let's be unlimited let's think the unthinkable let's realize the undreamt dreams there is no failure there is no failure till you admit a failure let's fly rockets to the sun and mars to make it dazzling like a star again to make it dazzling like a star again thank you thanks a lot that's called vociferous tribute yeah. that is what you presented in mumbai sir right <laughs> in the physical presence <laughs> what a beautiful presentation and great yeah. tribute i would say uh, mr thank you thank you for thanks thanks everyone and prasanna you are a great host man means love your contribution to the poetry community i feel <laughs> poets are not enough poets who create and support poetry communities poetic communities it is very very important <laughs> because we are a neglected tribe Yeah. <laughs> poets are a neglected <laughs> tribe so we need to support each other and bring back the past glory of poetry back again thank oh, you no. thank you thank you uh, sir thank you and now i would like to call upon our very back to very rhythmic in the always particular about the rhymes and rhyming she is harinder chima <laughs> ma'am kindly unmute your mic and you could, if you wish you could, if you wish you could react on uh, unmesh mohit ka sir's poem and then you could proceed your poem all right so uh, am i audible first of all yes yes ma'am yes ma'am go ahead all right uh hi good evening prasanna once again thank you so much for the invite uh great congratulations to shri lata ma'am uh, for the book the great work which has seen the light of the day and uh, well unmesh poems is one great tribute and uh, the way he has delivered it absolutely stupendous absolutely phenomenal so and that is the way and i'm just going to carry the mood forward i'm also going to sing about the unsung heroes i'm going to recite a poem which is let us stand with our soldiers in this poem i lament the fact that our soldiers are glorified only during war and war like situations this is for all those who have not seen war from close it is a story of a soldier who with memories of his wife and children marched marches to the front along with his brethren how he remembers the innocent questioning look on the faces of those 
whom he has given life. How he longs for a little child from his wife. With memories fresh and clear of those near and dear, he marches forth, showing great mirth and cheer. We salute the same faceless soldier in his coffin, watching a TV channel over a cup of tea and a piece of muffin. With an occasional tear in our eye and choked throat, pretending not to be rude, someone suggests to change the channel and also the mood. In a nation where we respect the real life heroes, we have no time to pay respect to the real life heroes who do not return to the comforts of home after a shoot to watch their performance over wine and good food. He knows not how his death has changed the life of his widow, of his widow who was once his wife. Fighting in the battlefield, his thoughts are of his country and countrymen and not his widow and his orphans. Such is the sacrifice of a soldier such is the sacrifice of a soldier who puts everything aside when he fears danger to his motherland and her pride. We try to remember him, but he's gone. The family lives, unsung, forgotten. Wake up for the sake of that selfless one. Wake up all ye selfish ones. Thank you so much. Thank you. The unsung has uh, is being heard. I mean, I would say that's a befitting trivia. I mean, the patriotic fervor is, you know, carrying on in a, throughout. You know, uh, thank you for presenting your beautiful poem, ma'am. Now I will. Uh, like... Sorry. Thank you so much, Prasanna. Thank you once again. Thank you, thank you. Now I would go to uh, Ganga Lakshmi Patnaik, ma'am. She is an active member and she is says well and. I would request Ganga Lakshmi Patnai ma'am to the session. And Prasanna, I would have to leave in a while because Shri. I have to join Shri. another session today. Shri. 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 Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Ganga Lakshmi Patnai ma'am. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor and pleasure to share this happy moment with book presentation of Dr. Srilata Madam. I am really excited to feel the long journey of Dr. Srilata, Madam, to give birth to, the, to this book. I extend my happiness finding the book about patriotism that illuminates my imagination. The book looks very good and a good book is a great literature. It stands for a big ocean of knowledge and Suddenly, I remember that we got Indian tricolor because of the struggle of the unsung heroes and heroines who are locked in that book. And Indian tricolor, when it comes, we get the campaign, Har Ghar Tiranga, and also we hold the Tiranga. And got different colors of the Tiranga that shows our unity in diversity. Chevron is at the top, white in middle, green at bottom, unfolds the beautiful tricolor. Chevron stands for sacrifice, courage, white for peace, truth, green for prosperity and fertility. Tiranga for Indians, sept vision, dignity, being with integrity is its identity and nobility. Really, I appreciate, madam, your book very much because of the book, we got the flag that is symbolic representation of a nation's code, policy, conduct, and principle. To fly national flag, a sign of honor, elation, positive affirmation of commitment, loyalty, freedom fighters instill patriotism, amplified struggle, through words are recalled in your pages of new book. I really thank you. Now, another thing, after getting all the poems about patriotism, I like to 
read another poem because today is 21st August, World Senior Citizens Day, to let seniors know how much we care them. It's also an opportunity to recognize their accomplishments. Happy Senior Citizens Day to all those elders who make life a lot wiser for us. Now I would like to read my poem. Title is Eulogy for Seniors. Title is Eulogy for Seniors. With years I have learned children migrate to metropolitan cities for jobs. With years I have learned children migrate to metropolitan cities for jobs. Children could not bother for parents, uncertainty, worries, uneasiness. Children could not bother for parents, uncertainty, worries, uneasiness. Old men say it's painful, stay lonely, desolate, friendless. Old men say it's painful, stay lonely, desolate, friendless. More painful living alone with unspeakable grief and loneliness. More painful living alone with unspeakable grief and loneliness. Let us pledge to assist them at the time of need. Let us pledge to assist them at the time of need. Little love from us take them achieving things all around. Little love from us take them achieving things all around. Love of our seniors. They are supportive and role models. Love our seniors. They are supportive and role models. Look up to them and follow by their examples. Look up to them and follow by their examples. Now my poem reading is over. My thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for presenting your poem and the reaction as well on the Shri ma'am. Still with us, ma'am, book. Thank you, thank you for the presentation. Now we have uh, three, uh, you have among us as you know, contributors of you know, anthology. We have um, Lakshmi ma'am, Arbind Kumar Chaudhary ma'am sir and Asim, Dr. Asim Kumar Paul sir. So uh, I would like to, uh, first I would like to call Laks Lakshmi ma'am. Uh, Lakshmi ma'am, Lakshmi Devi. Dr. Lakshmi as a contributor of this uh, anthology. Lakshmi Devi, ma'am. Ma'am, kindly unmute your mic. Lakshmi Devi, ma'am. Uh, okay, she, I think she is, she might be fair. She's having this network issues. I think, uh, I now I would, I would go to, Asim Kumar Paul, sir, Dr. Asim Kumar Paul, sir, Paul, sir. He's a senior member. I see him as. I welcome to welcome me. Well, uh, welcome, sir, to the show. Can you can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Thank Do you. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are clear. I am clear. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks to editor Dr. T. Sridhar and Mrs. Suryata. Santalia for giving me a chance to read to write and read the poem. My poem is at page nine. My poem is this banyan tree. How many years old is this banyan tree that comes a little far away from Rani Shiromoni God that is fort? Perhaps 200 years or more it rests here. Perhaps it did not see that revolutionary period of Rani Shiromoni. One pioneer of Chuar revolt in the year 9, 7, 1798. It occurred to her when she took charge of the kingdom from her elder sister Rani Bhavani, who died in year 1760. Both were queens of King Ajit Singh who died in year 1755, and Rani Shirobari refused to pay land revenues to the British Raj. 
the rebellion was co-opted with local tribes against machinery of British Raj. And now the fort is a visiting spot in the area and a few papers closet to those period is available as revealing ones. War for liberty is a war that is fought by people who want it. After defeat of the Queen in the war against the British Raj, there was hardly another war and she lived in captivity for another decade uh, or more. And thus this banyan tree lived on its echoing simplicity. People then sat beneath it for rest, walking tired along. What was their discussions in that war? Did she come out from her port? Did she ever dip in the nearby Orang River? How was she in the port? How she greeted people? She might be kind-hearted with poor people in her time. How the Queen's soldiers did fight boldly to deter advancing British troops. Then she was defeated in 1799 and died in 1812. This tree cannot give an angel's eyes to describe and visualize past days of that time when people did wish to sit beneath this tree and eat food on banana leaves and to breathe in open air when we when we return after visiting her port, we are overwhelmed by an imagination due the beauty of the queen, but shocked to think that she was defeated in war. And now this billion tree lives in corporate culture that does not want everlasting benefits from the nature. At this time, people don't take water from drinking drinking from the nearby pond and they like to carry water bottles. They take rest in AC cottages built upon the big ponds corridor. They dream to travel in luxury boats in the nearby river Parang. And we forget that nature's golden gift defend us give us the wages and thus this banyan tree feels abundant. In the end, we are not realistic observer or of earthly images. We exhaust all sources of mirrors mechanism from Earth's bond, Earth's body. By this way, images will slip into a new region of migrants with many of us dead and this tree lived much forward. And it takes quality of natural things that it is nature's defending journey to this world to be the present tree boss. And it begins its resistive journey to alienate unusual fights that is that it does not like and thus we are ex uh, changing rapidly with the environment and cultural history of human is changing with kids and perceptions but in no circumstances we can read all writings of those days of our freedom struggle as those neither having a clear outline of those days of the queen nor an account how people of that time did survive after the queen's defeat in war against British Raj. And Rani Shiromani God carries so many roots now preserved of dilapidated forts and barracks built for the queen's soldiers. No one is there to remember how she begins first day after defeat and we have been drifted far away from the past war 
and O. Source, Karnagar Parikrama, a guidebook of Karnagar visit by Mr. Tapan Kumar Singha. Mr. Singha is a freelance researcher of local history. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for reading out your poem, your published poem, and uh, your, your made us your recall those you know unheard heroes. And uh, for you all present here, uh, Doctor um, Asim, uh, Mr. Asim Kumar Paul is an author of four poetry books and six poetry chapbooks, poetry and photography. He is conferred our award for his contribution to the poetry by Chennai and Literary Poets. Circle India and its annual uh, conference held in 2020. That's uh, Sim Kumar Paul sir, who contributed for and her songs of obscure heroes. Thank you for thank, thank you for you. coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and now, before proceeding to the next poet, I would like to call upon a very active member of our group. He is Kamar Sultana Sheikh. Hi. Hi, ma'am. Welcome. Hi, all. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Prasanna, sir, for accommodating me. A sudden guest, so I'm so sorry. I have to read my poem now. Uh, uh, since the spirit of Azadi is like uh, throughout the program, let me also read uh, a poem on that theme. It's called The Gandhi Currency. Uh, this is the millennial age, Silicon Valley shining. Silent stands the shade of Sabarmati. Is Gandhi obsolete? The three monkeys seem to have forgotten their respective prohibitions. Their hands free now as tools of violence. Do they think that Gandhi is dead? No matter how much hate divides, the Mahatma never dies. He lives in the heart of Sadhguru, the Sai, the Nanak, and the Aulia. He lives in the heart of bard and poet. From somewhere, he will emerge yet. For every hate speech, a new Gandhi moment is reborn. His avatar rises and speaks on the internet. Oh, it is enough long that Gandhi has been framed with a halo on the wall. It is time for a new Satyagraha of truth, peace, and coexistence. So take heart, dear friend, and rest assured be it still circulates the Gandhi currency. Dark be the times, yet I see him slowly, steadily walking by, for Mahatmas don't die. So footnotes, when I say Sai, I'm referring to the Shirdi Sai Baba. And the three monkeys are like, you know, uh, depicted with hands covering the eyes, ears, and mouth. I see no evil, I hear no evil, I speak no evil. Thank you. Wonderful, man, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for coming up with a beautiful poem. And uh, before calling upon Arvind Kumar, uh, thank you. Chaudhary, sir, I would go to uh, uh, Shaha, Gargi Shaha uh, from Varanasi. Gargi Shaha. Uh, she is a professor, she is a doctorate holder, she writes so well and she is active. She is Gargi Shaha from Varanasi. Gargi Shaha. Okay, uh, I think it could uh, uh, move on to next poet, sir. Arvind uh, Kumar Chaudhary, sir, if you are ready, you could take on the mic. Arvind Kumar Chaudhary, Dr. Arvind Kumar Chaudhary, uh, please recite your poem which you contributed uh, and told us. Okay, let. Uh, our bit Lakshmi Devi, ma'am. Lakshmi Devi, ma'am, are you ready? Okay, then I would, uh, since yes, they are sir. having this. Yes, uh, yes, sir. I'm back. Am I audible to everyone? Uh, yeah, you're audible, ma'am. You are Gargi Shah, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, turn on your video because I we see this. Uh, Pradeep uh, Naik, Paik, <laughs> as your name. So you could recite your poem. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Prasanna Kumar, sir.
मैम ये है ये और ये हैज बिन कट कैन यू हेयर मी गर्गी मैम ओके आई थिंक यू कैट बेटर मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट आई थिंक प्रसन्ना बट सर इज देयर हियर विद अस सो प्रसन्ना सर काइंडली रीड आउट योर पोएम प्रसन्ना बट सर Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Go ahead with your poem, sir. Sweet evening, sweet poetic friends. Thank you so much, super duper personality, Mr. Professor Kumar, who can motivate and mobilize your author's mind with his powerful voice and mind blowing commentary, advice, and encouragement. It is real, real history. Job. I am invited. This is decided one point. Really, I had decided one point, but suddenly I am going to be changed. India, so the title of the poem, Inertia of Motion. The title of poem, Inertia of Motion, is a physics work. Really, in your physics world, inertia of motion. Everybody thinks they are moving, but they are in one place. That is inertia of motion. Yeah, India achieved independence. Everybody praised with the great man's stories in impression, with great impression. All hope. India would be changed. Everybody hoped India would be changed. Do you feel it is changed? Do you feel it is changed? India is as it was before. India is as it was before. Nothing is going to be changed. Man is running and running. Man is running and running. He is in inertia of motion. Property, power, and position made man blind. Can't know what is in motion. Property, power, and position made man blind. Can't know what is in motion. Overjoyed with. illusion overjoyed with illusion progress and prosperity is in the high position he never sees wearing eye he never sees wearing the eye what is going behind him mockery and flattery are ruling the world humanity is going to be buried Humanity is going to be buried. Still, man hopes for a hopeful hope. Still, man hopes for a hopeful hope without any plan or vision. Oh man, are you not in progress? You are what what you wear. You are what what you wear. Your leg is in the depth of. Body egoism. Your leg is in the depth of a body egoism. Let the people live ego. Let the people live ego. Let the ego say go. Let the people live ego. Let the ego say go. Let man realize the condition to get and keep satisfaction, honoring country, honoring country, parents. And relatives, and relatives. This is the end of my poem. Thank you. Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the spirit is going on. Uh, let me call up one my long time friend. I think she is from. Uh, she is joining after a long gap. Uh, she is from Greece. She is Janti Andrei. 
Gianti. Hello, good afternoon to everyone. Congratulations to this uh, wonderful program you're doing. And um, I would like um, to read a poem which I wrote about the women in resistance as their song has never been song, sang anywhere in the world. So this one is called To Miss Afrosini. The past smells of naphthalene. From its cracks shoots the death. Marbled stones became leading paths to sightseeings and harbors. The trees saw them coming and going. They throw the feelings away every autumn to get rid of foreign sins. Shining are the weapons, silver the sheath of the knives of the swords, still scratching our souls. From the deep pottery sings still Ali Pasha his great victories around his neck, still wearing in golden stitched the souls of fighters and innocent women. Thank you. That's really brilliant, uh, Janti. Thanks for coming. After a long gap, you're, uh, you're busy with engaging poetry festivals, you know. <laughs> and that's a great work going on over there. We have the festival on the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of September. It's the first festival uh, which is international with poetry and in the open theater. But many people have inquired to do it next year a little earlier. So it might be around the 15th of August or around the time 20, 21st. So mm -hmm. you're all invited to come next year. And thank you for having me thank in thank your you. wonderful presentation. Thank you, thank, thank you for honoring the show. And uh, certainly, and uh, definitely, Molly Mam would be coming. Right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, okay. On that note, we'll go to, you know, from Greece to Spain. And she takes me as her son, and she's Isabel as Mirabilis. Isabel. Yeah. So, good afternoon to all the participants from Spain. I am very happy to be here with all of you. Um, a congratulations for for this uh, event, the, the, this great event. Uh, my great uh, friend and brother Kumar Prasanna. Congratulations. Uh, also to India, congratulations, hearty congratulations for your independence, uh, for your 75 years of force, of freedom. Congratulations. Um, I would like to, leave, to read um, a poem in my, in my language, is Spanish. And then in English, is it possible? The title uh, is Mañana, Tomorrow. Acaricias el reino de las sombras con tu espada de sierpes diamantinas. Y cada hora que te entrega el cielo, en batalla se torna por tu esencia. Acometes aceras y caminos con ímpetu y furor de héroes sin rumbo disfrutando los mares de un misterio que a tu oído rinde su leyenda. Visitante de ingrávidas regiones, nube de ruiseñores encantados, deja volar tu canto libremente, como deja la sal su huella en la marea, como deja la noche su horizonte y al beso de la luz se hace mañana. In English, in, in my almost English, 
morning. <laughs> you, you caress the king of shadows with your sword of diamond serpents. And every hour that heaven gives you, in battle it becomes your essence. You rush sidewalks and roads with the impetus and fury of an aimless hero, enjoying the seas of a mystery that to your ear renders its legend. Visitor from weightless region, enchanted nightingale, cloud, let your son, let your son fly freely as salt leaves its mark in the tide. How the night leaves its horizon in the keys of light is down tomorrow. That's a pleasure to Thank you very much. Pessimist, optimistic, I would say, you know. Uh, thank you, thank you, Isabel. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you to you, dear thank Kumar Prasad. Thank you. thank you. And before calling upon the next poet to recite, I would once again uh, request Arvind Kumar Chaudhary, sir, and Lakshmi Devi, ma'am, to no, I turn on their mic and recite their poem. I went into for into unsecured songs of obscure heroes. I would like to hear from Arvind Kumar Chaudhary sir and Lakshmi Devi. Kindly turn on your mic. I mean, unmute your mic, sir. Arvind Kumar Chaudhary and Lakshmi Devi Map. Uh, uh, we could see you, but then we could not, you know, uh, your mic is not, not turning on. I mean, you, you, I don't know. Okay, let me call upon Hashmuk Mehta sir, a very wake to poet from India, I mean, Ahmedabad, he's a retired, uh, you know, uh, Air Force Space, I mean, Air Force personnel, as very active member, as active writer, he repent uh, um, uh, about 30,000 poems, you know, <laughs> can you believe it? Hasmik Mehta sir. Hasmuk Mehta sir. Hmm. I've Mehta, sir, you are there and kindly unmute your mic. Go ahead, sir. Uh, something, some network issue is happening and let me call upon Bharti Hazarika, ma'am, a very active member on Facebook. And she hails from Assam, Guwahati. Okay, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, ma'am. Go ahead with your poem. Mm, I could not attend your in your program for a long time and now mm, I did not write any poem about uh, unsung heroes so I want to read a poem from Song of Peace from this book. Oh wow it's ours from Fertile Brains. <laughs> Thank you for presenting. <laughs> Song of Peace. It is edited by you. Uh, my poem, the title of my poem is Path of Peace. Nonviolence is a true weapon to keep the peace is of sole concern. 
No violence means no war. Living in happiness is something to implore. The ideal Gandhi to restore the faith in humanity. No violence means no war. No nonviolence towards nature and animals at par. Keeping nonviolence and love as your ideal, ideal, our dream of peaceful world will be real. Thank you. Oh, that's so crisp and sweet. That's a really talked about the peace, song of peace. Thank you for presenting your beautiful poem and thanks for coming after a long gap, you know, and keep coming. I would now I would request uh, uh, Sudipta Mishra, ma'am, to present her poem. Good evening, sir. Good evening, May I be audible? Yes, yes, yeah. Please go ahead. Let it. me extend congratulations to Silita, ma'am, for her book. Let me recite my poem. Is there any theme for today? Free, free, ma'am. Open theme. Theme? Is open. there any theme? No, no, open theme. You can, you can recite whatever you feel Let like. Let me recite my poem. This is dedicated to the all persons whom we have lost on pandemic. In your memory, people die, but in their places, often they live. Our memories with them, the days spent with some laughter, mingled with their yells, fused with their screams. In the formless world of forms, we often vainly seek their presence, in the murmurs, in their saints, so lust, so faded into the cosmic world of France. But do we announce their presence? No, no, and big no. Life is indecisible. Death is the biggest illusory. Still, death is also certain. But our fragile heart fails to admit it. It only changes its loved ones. Yet, they depart us with a huge vacuum, living out from the deep passage in which we try to clutch them towards an infinite end. But at the birth of life, we have to accept one ultimate truth, that is secession, silence, calmness, perpetual bliss, resignation, declines, and our memories lay deeply buried with the exit of their earthly bodies. Within the deepest pit of anguish, we deposit all our emotions inside. Often, in the darkest hours of nights, we release them with grieving for the departed souls for our ever-arguing spirits, too adorous to accept the reality. Yet, we have to accept the decorum. Soul transmits from one core to another by leaving behind that incredible essence. It's complete. Over. So that's Thank you. Sudipta, Dr. Sudipta Mishra for you, who pens you know, profound poems always, and you know, rhyming and rhythming. <laughs> in fact, Thank always. You, and uh, she's from Bhavaneshwar, if I'm right, or maybe from Puri. Puri or Puri. <laughs> Puri, Puri, yeah. Jai Jagannath. And uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. now I will once again call, uh, I will get back to uh, uh, Sudha, Dr. Shaha. Um, <laughs> thank you <laughs> so. thank you sir thank you very much for inviting me uh, first of all i would like to congratulate Mr. Lata ma'am for such a substantial book on freedom fighters it was a remarkable book we have learned so much about the history of yours you know it was very stupendous thank you very much ma'am for such a wonderful book to all of us okay now i would like to recite my poem to my dear soldier he is always standing there for the country, he lays down his life, he doesn't care. He is the emblem of courage, patriotism, and sacrifice. How to repay him his infinite price? 
His deeds are as sweet as sugar, mission nobler than a prayer. He is as busy as a bee, ever rushing, ever fulfilling like a sea. As wise as a serpent, the touch by the angel sent. He moves ahead, never looks back, crosses innumerable tracks. God made the masterpiece in serenity and bliss. He was no other but my dear, dear soldier. Thank you. God made the masterpiece. He was no other but my dear, dear soldier. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for the disturbance uh, that uh, you know, happened. And thank you, thank you for you know you write sm small poems, no? right? You always that uh, at, you know you present it so well. Thank you, thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Shaho, ma'am, for coming to show and this. And now I would like to call upon Bosse, you know, <laughs> our you know very active member of the group. He gives prompts and you know he asks other poets to write in you know, a response. That are given pictures and all, and he encourages, he supports uh, them. And he is Basudev Paul, sir. Ah, Basudev, sir. Welcome yes, sir. You. I am waiting for it because I have another interactive sorry, session. Sorry for you for keeping for keeping you you know waited for a long time. Uh, thank very, you, thank you. Very, very, thank you, very much, very much. And uh, uh, today. Today I have composed a poem in response to a poem written uh, and given on the group's fertile brains. Hmm. And the title of the poem is Silence. Silence is a vocal romance. Its absence marks the boy. Sound is trapped in lockup, suppressed roads, crying pant, fires blaze forth at times in flint, otherwise it is hidden like volcano. Silence is a terrific infant in angel. It gets corrupted with outside rub. Silence is ruminative on a green top. No beginning, no middle and no end. It's perennial even in death and life. The shielding thought erupts in sight. Silence is a revealer of the probable. We bathe in its perception and fear. Thank you. Thank you all for your question yeah. hearing. Silence. Thank you, sir. Thank you for presenting your beautiful poem on silence uh, again. And thank you for, you know, sitting all the while. <laughs> well, most thank you. And now I would move to Asmuk Mota, sir, once again, and I would request him to turn on his mic and read out his poem. Asmuk Mehta, sir. Uh, Asmuk Mehta, sir, you are on. Kindly unmute your mic. Asmuk Mehta, sir, you are on. Are you getting me? Yes, kindly sir, I am getting you. Please. I unmuted, but I don't know if it's working or not. Yeah, yeah, go ahead with your phone. Uh, yes, sir. Are you getting me? Yes, sir, we are getting me. Are you getting me, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead with Okay, okay, I'll try to Sir, I'm sorry, I'm hard to, I have to, uh, I'm sorry, I have to move on, sir, because, you know, so lots of disturbance is happening, you know, uh, it's been, um, I have to, sorry, I think I could go to uh, Padmavati Setluri, ma'am, is a very active member of our group, so I'm sorry, Setluri Padma, ma'am. Yeah, am I audible? Am I audible? Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. And um, first of all, I would like to congratulate 
a very close friend of mine, Dr. Srilata, for taking pains to get all these poems published in this beautiful book, Diamond India, Unheard Songs of Obscure Heroes. I feel privileged to be, to be the part of um, this anthology. Uh, I wrote two poems, and let me read one poem about Sucheta Kripalani. A girl who was self-conscious, attentive, and shy grew up learning about the Indian freedom fight. Jallianwala Bagh massacre made her greatly horrified. She and her sibling joined the movement with might. Sucheta wedded to J.B. Kripalani, a prominent figure of the Indian National Congress Party at the time a person of rare courage who strived to configure the All India Mahila Congress that was so prime. Kripalani participated in the Quit India movement and worked with Mahatma during the partition riots. The first women CM worked for UP's improvement. After independence, she was not at all unquiet. She got involved in politics with fervor and zeal to serve the nation as the Congress nominee. The intelligent lady bravely handled every day. With her demands, she made the leaders agree. She was not born with a steely will and qualities, but the situations made her curious and strong. Sucheta was known for human values and equality that made her work Hard. That made her work hard for the state lifelong. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, wonderful, ma'am. And thank you. thank you for presenting a poem from the book itself so that, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's a good occasion, you know. It's, yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. And I love the way you recite. And, thank you, Prasanna thank you. Ji. Uh, Thank you, Let me go to other poem. I mean, honorable invite other man. Uh, Arvind Kumar Chaudhary sir is now. I think he's active. I, I would go to Dr. Arvind Kumar Chaudhary sir. I would request him to kindly unmute his mic and turn on his video. First. And Arvind Kumar Chaudhary. Is in a, a story of English from you know Assam, from the Rang, Ranga Rangchahi College. He is honored with the Champion of Champions and Fraser King in Indian English poetry. Mahatma Gandhi Education and the Poor Welfare Society sponsored a National Poetry Award in 2018. Arvind Kumar Chaudhary sir. This is maybe the third time I am calling. <laughs> Kindly unmute your mic sir. I am trying to mute, unmute your mic but then it is not happening. Okay sir, go ahead. Hello sir. Yes sir, go ahead. Uh, uh, are you listening to me? Yes sir, yes sir. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you for inviting me. I am going to read my poem. There is, that is a very small poem, that is a sonnet from Mother India. The name of the poem is Mother India. India is the mother for a man of sensitive thought. India is the mother for a man of sensitive thought. India is a land of peace for a man of hyper thought. India is a land of peace for a man of viper thought. India is the capital of the guardian angels. India is the capital of the guardian angels where various doctrines plus time become time's best jewels. India is the capital of the guardian angels where various doctrines become time's best jewels. India is the cultural capital India is the cultural capital where Sangam cultures exhume 
with the passage of time. India is the cultural capital where Sangam cultures vacuum with the passage of time. India is the yoga capital. India is the yoga capital where shaping soul becomes time's best laurel. India is the religious capital where various religions blossom together for its citadel. India is the religious capital where various religions blossom together for its citadel. India is a land of Tom, Dick and Harry. India is a land of Tom, Dick and Harry where luminary turns the century for the success story of Mary. Indianness, this is the last couplet. Indianness was the mission of Mahatma like bird of passage. Indianness was the mission of Mahatma like bird and bird of passage who lived and died for the sake of Mother India. Indianness was the mission of Mahatma like bird of passage who lived and died for the sake of Mother India. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All about India, all about India. India, Tom, Dick, and Harry lives in India. <laughs> but I wish I would, uh, you would have, you know, they said the poem from the book, you know, Maharshi Arbindo. That was something to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got <laughs> But that you have, you know, uh, time is very less. I'll come back to you and uh, I'll ask you to reset on the book and stay for a while. And now I would uh, ask uh, Kalipuda Ghosh sir to recite his poem. Thank you for presenting your beautiful poem, sir. And stay back, I'll come back to you. Kalipuda Ghosh sir. Sir, you are not audible. Sir, you are not audible. Kalipada Gas, sir. Your mic is on, but then uh, we can't hear you. I don't know. Okay, before that, I think you could just uh, 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 troubleshoot it. And uh, before that, I, I think uh, uh, let me call upon uh, Saraswati Poshwalma. You just returned. <laughs> Saraswati Poshwalma, for you, as very active member on Sarah Hello, Government Platform. How are you all? Very good, ma'am. Thank you so much, K. Kumar Prasanna ji, for inviting me uh, to this platform of yours. And you're giving me the opportunity. I'm feeling very much humble and honored. Thank you so much. It's not the platform of mine. It's the platform of ours, ma'am. Ours, ours. Definitely ours. <laughs> Thank you so much once again inviting me. So today I'm going to recite one of my published poems. Uh, the title of my poem is Harmony. Uh, laminate your heart. Laminate your heart with wrap of love. Bond of hugs. No grudge accumulate, the space of trust. Tranquility is the best revert. Never ever let dusk envelop. Summarize or analyze with symphony of harmony enticed in words. Engulf the sorrows and tears like never exist. To nurture such strive, shekels of stubble, payments with gushing persistence of fortitude, for rendering no kuchner, no knocking with the harmony inside and outside with our united deeds. So after that, one, one of my small poem, the title is uh, Long, Longing Arms of the Trees. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Uh, am I audible? Am I no. audible? Ma'am, you have finished your first poem, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. yeah, yeah. So yeah. You... This was poem. Yeah, yeah. So, so on the single poem is allowed now because okay. since number. Okay, so... thank you so much. <laughs> I thought I recited this and, poem before. And... No, I thought I have recited this poem before. That's why I was about to recite another one. This is oh, a yeah. small poem, Krishna ji. 
the music of love only uh, four line poem his flute steel Good. her heart songs which she sang near the river mesmerized and gestures overcast lurking in with the smile flute echoing mandarin touching with the soft sensual heart smoothing and soothing woven thoughts uplifting the soul redeemed alight they move around in the arms perching for the spiritual wistful analog of love tangible taste of love transfiguring under the veil of thoughts with the cordial unfathomable love of shri krishna hope you like my poem as mm-hmm. you know janmashtami went so this was written on that day thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank you thank you ma'am now i would like to call up on prabhat kumar mishra sir he gives sermons on bhagavad gita is very active on by you know giving lectures and deliver lectures on bhagavad gita prabhat kumar sir from okay parampur odisha 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 parampur right yes sir from brahmapur brahmapur the silk city okay thank you very much my dearest brother prasanna kumar sir and i am also uh, thankful to all the uh, poets present in this beautiful forum of today i am really honored to be here and i just express my heartfelt love to each one of you here is my poem the will and it is best upon a true story that sir i'm sir i'm afraid you're having this uh, network issue i feel i think i think can come back to you when you while i uh, let me uh, ask you let me ask you to let me mute you and uh, ask dharampal takur ji to mute his mic hello sir go ahead with the poem sir uh, Uh, I express my sense of gratitude to Dr. Prasanna for inviting me. Sure, and uh, you know, after a long gap. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Audible, sir. You could turn okay. on your. Yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, I express my sense of gratitude to Dr. Prasanna for inviting me. Uh, congratulations to uh, Ma'am Dr. Siri Lata. on the publication of uh, such a great work uh, which is quite uh, emulating and inspiring the title of my poem is where is a war great and glorious o warring nations where is a war great and glorious when it sends home suppurating skeletons of a young soldier molded and maimed mercilessly when it sends home tears and troubles to his old ailing parents whose funeral pyres were to be borne and burnt by him their only child when it sends home wails and woes to his young wife who had dreamed before a sacred fire a widowless death after enjoying countless springs of his conjugal company when it sends home his horrifyingly hewn hands to his dear child who was waiting with the elation to hold them and show him her star student award and celebrate her great joy by making him buy a big teddy bear and choice chocolate for her who loved him dearly and missed him every day o warring nations your commands to do or die have neither love and respect for human life nor pride or valor nor pity or fear but they are only a harbinger of misery and death to countless innocent humans of destruction to countless homes and habitats o oh, victorious nation your jubilation gives neither joy nor justice gives neither the vision of 
prosperity nor peace it is rather a dirge reminding us of a hell of horrors haunted by homelessness howls and hunger thank you thank you all thank brilliant, you sir. brilliant sir thank you <laughs> an excellent poem and then that thought provoking and uh, i would say uh, uh, now uh, thank you thank you sir darmpal thakur sir thank you so kind of you sir thank you once again and now once again i would call uh, prabhat kumar mishra sir so, uh, i think he has rectified this might uh, earlier he had his network issues prabhat kumar sir le <coughs> Prabhat Kumar Mishra. And uh, mm, let me ask Kalipada Ghosh. Sir, again, uh, again the same issue, sir. You are audible, but you are, I mean, you are talking, but we are not, it is not audible. I mean, you are not. <laughs> Try to log in and log out, log out and log in, sir. And maybe uh, the, this is the way, I think. Maybe you could get the uh, issue shorted out. Uh, yeah. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead with your poem. No, I like it. Uh, yes, sir. प्रभात कुमार यस आई लाइक यो के सर कौन कर दिस कर दिस तो लग सुन रहा यस यू आर ऑडिबल सर गो अहेड विद योर पोएम सर यू आर ऑडिबल गो अहेड विद योर पोएम सर सर आई एम सर आई एम प्रभात कुमार मिश्रा फ्रॉम ओडिशा या गो हेड सर ओके सो हियर इज माय पोएम द वर्ल्ड ए मिस्टर इन रीड एंड एंड सेकंड द स्टोरी वर्ल्ड ऑन द डेवलप्ड क्लोज क्वाइट साइलेंट स्ट्रांग इवन फुल डेकोरेटेड विद वाइल्ड सोइल डेकोरेटेड विद वाइल्ड सोइल पेंटेड कॉइंस blessing palms of goddess let's me and a bunch of slant corn leaves the first ray of morning full upon it the first ray of morning fell upon it in its shade grew a bush dance to dance an obscel darkness an obscel darkness prevailed in the bush and it faced us and it lost its glow also took on of a temple and god stone this was the well this was the well resting upon which i wrote my first poem of tribute to bapuji i wrote my first poem of tribute to bapuji and sir it is a true poem upon haria swar a freedom a, an own song freedom fighter of kalikot who was once punished by the king but later when he was chosen Uh, to be honored, all that he had, just a simple wall, and the poem is based upon this. Thank you very much. Thank. You. Good evening. Thank you, sir. Beautifully recited. I would say <laughs> nice recitation, and thank you. Uh, the spirit is going on. Uh, sir, Kali Pada Gar, sir. Uh, are you okay with your mic, sir? Thank you, sir Prabhat Kumar, sir, for presenting your beautiful poem and coming on the show. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, we have two two poets left. We have Isaac Cohen from Israel. Isaac Cohen, kindly unmute your mic. Isaac Cohen. Yes. <clears throat> I the coin, the symbol of love. Uh, yes, 
in the lake, I saw you like a dream. In the sky, dragon fly flew around. I wait for you and we dance the dance of fire. Brightness spreads over the lake, reflect in your eyes. I tell the world, this is love. Thank you, Adeko and Israel. <laughs> Keep your smile intact always, Isaac. <laughs> rocking on the chair with your beautiful thoughts <laughs> poems. And <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. We have Ashmuk Mehta, sir, who is, uh, is there from beginning, but then he is facing, you know, this network and, and the mic issues and uh, Kalipodas goes around as well. I would request Hasmuk Mehta, sir, to recite yeah. his poem. Thank you, Isaac. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Asmuk Mehta, sir, kindly unmute your mic. Ah, oh, yeah. Kalipada Goshar, are you good to go? <laughs> um, I'm afraid uh, we are, uh, you're not audible, sir. I mean, uh, something. I have to. Because little hard of hearing. Exactly. So, I have, uh, have to answer, sir. Personally, uh, first book, my daughter is hard of hearing, so you please unmute uh, his mic. I'm sorry, sir, I can't hear you as well. You know, it is your bandwidth is slow, and okay. uh, I'm sending message. I'm sending message. Let me see. Yeah, I would uh, now request uh, Ansari. Ansari, sir, is there with us? Ansari, sir. Uh, I, I request him to kindly unmute his mic and turn on his video and present his poem. Ansari. Ansari. I could name. I could see his name only as Ansari, but uh, nothing else. Okay. <laughs> Let me come back to Arvind. Uh, Arvind Kumar Chaudhary, sir once again and ask him and I would request him to recite his poem, poem from the book and her songs of obscure heroes. Arbind Kumar Chaudhary, sir. Arbind Kumar Chaudhary, sir, kindly uh, please turn on your mic and recite your poem. Arbind Kumar Chaudhary, sir. You're there here. Uh, I think I don't know what's happening, but then, okay, I think we pretty much finished uh, since we tried our best to call Hasmuk Mehta sir and uh, Kali Podagash sir, but then they are uh, facing this technical issues. Uh, now, only remind is our senior most member, I would not say, I, I would not introduce her as everyone knows she is a scholar she is a professor she is a social activist she is she's everything i mean um, she's very much active i mean she is editor of you know, any number of journals she is editor of different truths she is my inspiration my supporter my everything my dr srupali sarkar gao ma'am now the mic is yours <laughs> Overwhelm me with your love. Most beautiful thing. Can you help me clearly? Yes, ma'am. There are, you know, there were uh, quite a few poems on soldiers, 
so I just selected one uh, that I had written quite some time ago because I do write a lot about soldiers. And uh, coming from a military family and, and, you know, watching the irony of the whole thing, you know, war, I, I heard somebody talk about how war is, you know, such a terrible thing. And Mr. Hasbrook Mehta also writes a lot of stuff about, you know, the armed forces. Now, the thing is, before I read my poem, I want to tell you that, you know, we glorify war. We glorify the dead. And this, and we sit in our homes and we glorify them. There are people who come out of war disabled, you know, their hands and legs and everything cut off. They're treated so badly by the government and by everybody. I've written a poem about that too, but I won't read it today. Uh, what I'm going to read is that this I wrote some many years ago. On 26th January, I went to see the Republic Day Parade in Delhi. We were staying there and I saw um, uh, a young widow. I don't know if you remember uh, a person called Albert Ekka who won the Paramvir Chakra. You know? And uh, that's the highest award for bravery. And his wife went to posthumously, he was given the award. There was a young boy standing little away from where I was sitting and he was growing a bubble gum. You know, he was, he was growing this huge bubble gum while the citation was being read. Okay. And that, in, that made me write this poem. And it's called, Don't Bring Home the Warrior Dead. Don't bring home the warrior dead. Who is that frail woman standing, wrapped in white like an Egyptian mummy? The aide de camp dressed in braided gold and green, holding a silver plate. On it, resting a scroll of gold gifted paper and a velvet box. From the flag lined people filled flower decked path, the dragonfly microphone deeply droned the sacrifice of men in olive green. He had charged in where gods had feared to go. Guns blazing, leading his men into the valley of death to drag out, to destroy the satanic figures who lurked in the dark inside the stony walls behind those wooden doors. Their cowardly faces hidden and themselves hiding behind the frightened women and children. His men had followed, crawling on their elbows, while others gave cover, each one a brave heart. In a bold shower of bullets, the enemy he annihilated. The ear splitting screams of hostage women and children drowned the fall of the martyred soldier. Oh, captain, my captain, <coughs> on the deck you lie, fallen cold and dead. The president is pleased to confer the highest honor for gallantry. A gold edge papyrus scroll and a piece of metal ceremoniously held out to the stone shrouded widow in return for the deeds that were done. An uncaring young boy let the bubble gum blow big till it burst into an ugly clown face, pink and sticky. Peace doves roost in the brooding ramparts of the Red Fort while soldiers are left to die. Strike up a bugle the tunes of glory. Let the proud flag flutter high. The chinar trees stay forever green. The blood that was spilled was ours too. Oh, hear the hoofs of the apocalyptic horses. They have brought home the warrior dead. They have brought home the warrior dead. Thank you. The spirit of valor, you presented it so well, ma'am. I mean, Ma uh, can I can I talk one second to ma'am Prasanna? Please, 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 ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I think this poem was published in a textbook. Am I right, ma'am? In a textbook? Yes, ma'am. I I taught I literature. I taught I literature. Yes, ma'am. For so many years. Yes, I taught this poem. I think it was published maybe in class 8th or ninth? I don't remember exactly. I have no idea, but you know, Same I have poem. written the title. The title is uh, They Brought the Warrior Home Dead. And yes. I have said, don't bring home the warrior dead. 
okay okay may, may that may i it was you know your poem reminded me of that poem actually yes similar to that ah uh, yeah, yeah okay okay but it's a beautiful thank you ma'am and thank I, so I, I i i love your poetry and i love your talk everything thank you so much thank you so much thank you and thank, thank you prasanna thank, <laughs> thank you prasanna thank you prasanna actually you. that's the motto of you know having and you know, the, 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 the the aim of uh, you know having this uh, discussion yeah. evening yeah, or some, whatever you yeah somewhere I, I i i love um, uh, dr hasbuk uh, mehta's poems you know he he writes the great one of feeling about soldier yes i mean look i mean take his spirit ma'am is uh, consider his ways and everything you know he writes continuously and that's uh, that's a kind of inspiration and thank you rupadi ma'am we have uh, thank you say padma ma'am and uh, we have with us marcia from romania al alham hamedi from iran so i would like i would request uh, marcia to read out his poem he is from romania and he is uh, as you all know he is uh, you know he has his uh, open mics is uh, you know is a uh, what do you call him uh, <laughs> what do you call him? <laughs> i could not uh, you know uh, speaks uh, much about him but he is uh, in the, he's so much worthy of in the literary arena marcia dandata is very active i mean let me say Marcia, this turn on your mic and read out it. Spot. I'm sorry, it was. It seems to be a problem here. Um, thank you very much. It is an honor for me uh, to be invited to your uh, show. And uh, as I have already told this, I very much respect it and uh, I appreciate its uh, dynamism. Um, and uh, actually, the dynamism and the very quick evolution of everything you have done during less than one year. I keep finger crossed, fingers crossed for you so that you would be at least as successful as you managed to be during the last month and uh, years. Um, my poem was written uh, after a reading uh, into a, within a psychiatrical hospital. Uh, it, was, it happened uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, I wrote it because I was more than impressed. And not only me, all the ones taking part in that reading, you were very much impressed by the participative way of those of that audience of uh, taking part in the action of being um, of being uh, a part of the show and uh, of reacting to everything that uh, was happening there. And still you dance on your impenetrable spiral, trembling, oh, you fools, you silent fools, you fools amazed, you fools so full of dreams that emptied all their spirals, a cloud of old electrons in love is dissolving your eternity above your dreams of love and still you don't know them and you have never seen them or heard them nevertheless you manage to comprise those enormous doors under that empty skies of questions that have never gone and all the things that you have never done, you didn't even know that they exist. Released and still again released. 
and still you dance, and still you're spinning in your dance, rotating all your senseless moves. Nothing to lose, nothing to win, nothing to be too strong, too small, too thin, too thin. You fools just turning within your within your empty dance, you fools amazed, you silent fools, poor fools, poor fools. Thank you very much. I am still under the strong impression of the emotion I felt when the reading for those for those people. Once again, thank you very much for allowing me Wonderful to, to, read Wonderful. This, to read this within uh, this uh, this show. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, madam. Thanks brilliant. a lot. Thanks for coming, Masia. This is brilliant. That's my show for you all. It's just a philosophical, I would say. <laughs> Maybe Dr. Rupali ma'am would be a better person to react on that. Yeah, here is for you. Rupali ma'am. Could you say something? Yes, ma'am. You, you could react on my shell's poem. I was so carried away by his rendering the poem, you know, the bellicose manner in which he, you know, that is how poetry must be read. You know, we all write poetry, we write a lot of poems, but uh, I think the way in which uh, the emotions came out so beautifully. And I was really touched very much. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Thank, Thank you for you your much. appreciation. It really means a lot to me. Thank you very much. That's much here for you all. And he's a cultural manager. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> that is what I, he was referred to me as. I don't know whether I fit the bill or not. But then, Marcia, thank you for gracing the, you know, the show. And thanks for coming. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Mark. And good luck. Thank you. And before wrapping up the show, I like to have. I would like to have a final word, probably from uh, with uh, with uh, uh, related to unsecured song of obscure heroes. Rupali, ma'am, you you may not aware of this book. Uh, that you know, I haven't read it, but I do want to read it. So I'll order it. Yeah. And uh, congratulations to Dr. Srilata for bringing this out. Uh, you know, the unsung and unknown people have to be brought to the forefront. And, uh, you know, the whole process of writing, the person who's writing it is actually learning. It's not so much us reading it, but the person who's writing it is coming to know about that person. He's doing some research, he's reading about it. And I think that that's where, uh, you know, you internalize uh, these great heroes who we have forgotten. It's, uh, it's exactly. be, I'm sure it must be wonderful. I, I'll definitely order this book. Give me the details, Prasanna, and I'll get the book and read it. Thank you very much for your Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now I would uh, ask uh, Padmavati, ma'am, to have a sure, final question. Uh, let me come back to you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yeah, I should. Uh, you mean about the book? Yeah. Talk about. Can I talk about the book? Yes, exactly, ma'am. It is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, the this book was uh, published for a particular reason, uh, you know, with a particular reason and for a, uh, a special, uh, what I want to say is that uh, uh, the organizer, our Dr. Srilata, she had a great thought of collecting poems from all the poets based on this topic, that is, you know, the people, the national leaders, are our great heroes, Indian heroes or national leaders, whatever we call. She wanted to make the people aware, uh, you know, aware of these 
ignored heroes we can say that some of the leaders were ignored by us we hardly remember them uh, in as indians we respect them definitely we respect these national heroes we love them and uh, we have much regard but at the same time somewhere we don't you know recall that is what you know she wanted to make indians be proud of those heroes and she wanted uh, all indians to remember them that is what her uh, main agenda or purpose am i right sri i think that is uh, that is your main ambition i call her sri and lata whatever it is yes. you know she is there. yeah yeah so that is how she collected yeah yeah so methodically she you know edited uh she methodically get them organ you know published in the book and even the cover page is so beautiful the moment you see the cover page you feel like you know reading the thoughts of all the other um, poets that is what i felt uh, i think i think i uh, have i given the idea silata that's wonderful man thank you thank you uh, yes yeah. yeah. That's and, a word, uh, word from uh, Rupali ma'am and say Padmavati ma'am on book and uh, uh, this uh, take credit goes to Lakshmi ma'am today's uh, event. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Sri Lata ma'am <laughs> because you know the spirit has go you know went on you know it's patriotic spirit and patriotic you know freedom movement like like struggles and you know like soldiers everything you know this basing on the book. that you know everyone inspired and they read out their poem even you know even it's a open theme but then they took the uh, i mean they took the those poems that they uh, and read, read out so entire credit goes to silata ma'am uh, for presenting her book and, uh, and coming on the show and you know uh, taking the pains uh, you know and collecting and uh, you know compiling them and uh, making the research Uh, i could imagine it is it's not any ordinary task you know for you know, for the work that's went into uh, behind so uh, sridhita ma'am hi yes so uh, may i have you work may i tell you a few words about the uh, book yeah sure sure ma'am you have few minutes left uh, the main idea is not my credit uh, i gave my i learned uh, contributions from all the poets made this uh, valuable and uh, as a, a precious treasure to our nation i believe and especially uh, when a leader of freedom fighting or as our leaders who inspired who uh, motivated us who left Uh, some angles uh, mark on our minds. The spotlight was on only a few people. There were many, many people who were there left behind these leaders. Of course, the leaders in the forefront are there to lead the movement, but there are many who carry their own responsibilities on their shoulders and they make this whole thing possible. So I thought. Yes, there needs to be more, and there should be a discussion among all people. This discussion should inter- promote interest among the future generation people, and they should do this in a way that is more and more people who are still young. That's my idea, and this wide and greatest platform is provided by you, Mr. President. I humbly thank you, and I pronounce to you. a noble part of bringing this book to this stage so thank you very much for that and uh, before we start i would like to listen to your poem to which is contributed here is on page 50 uh, the queen of hearts and uh, on this is your poem uh, this has the opportunity of listening to your poem thank you ma'am thank you <laughs> i mean actually such books are a service to the country you know every book is not a service and many books are you know written but 
your book dr shrinata is a, is a your uh, not dedication and service you know and it's not only the soldier who serves this country people like you you know who brought together so many poets i'm sorry that i'm not in it you know so you better bring out another book you know volume 2 then i shall also yes, contribute <laughs> With that, I Thank think you, uh, we pretty much have, you know, had a, a healthy discussion, a healthy presentation. I know uh, the spirit of uh, that uh, uh, brought in by Sri Lata Ma'am as uh, is enjoyed, and uh, that you know uh, the spread. You know, the, I would say. <laughs> the all poets and in the, the in this is shared by all poets now i would uh, stop this live stream and i would uh, thank one and all for you know coming uh, and gracing the show of fatal bands poetic evening with fatal bands it's a weekly program so keep coming and keep sharing your poems and uh,